Week and I'm glad you brought the show. And as we kick off Labor Day weekend, uh, today I have a very special guest as we continue my, well, which was my summer series, the uh, Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture. Well, now it's going to be a little, it's going to be uh, an interview series for this next, uh, for the start of my sixth season on YouTube. I just uh, recently celebrated my fifth anniversary being a YouTuber, and I came across this guy who uh, was a former producer for a well-known animated company called, I think I believe it's called Klas- Klasky or Chasky Supo, if I'm saying <laughs> that right. I'm probably butchering it, probably. But it's, you know, uh, it's Klasky Chupo. That's Klasky Arlene Klasky Chupo. and okay. Gabor Chupo. Okay, Klasky Chupo. Okay, I got it. Anyway, the former producer and animator, Mr. Larry LaFrancis, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much, Frankie. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Hey, no problem. Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, you you, you kind of, you know, the other day you asked me why I wanted to interview you, and you you kind of, I don't know, I was kind of surprised that uh, you kind of asked that type of question because you probably don't get interviewed that often, or, or what? Um, I uh, have been interviewed before. I've been in print and so forth, and uh I, you know, I just, it, it may be shocking. Maybe I'm, I got a bad case of humility. I don't know. It might be, I, I might get over that. We'll see. <laughs> well, um, that's fine. So, anyway, uh, where do you want me to start? Well, we can uh, start with kind of the, the, kind of the beginnings of uh, how uh, you got interested in animation and uh, kind of how, you know, kind of your, your life's, not really your life story, but just kind of, what got you motivated and uh, how it got from uh, your start to where you ended up. Okay, great. Um, I, let's focus on the animation part. Okay. I, uh, my background, I, I, one of the first things I need to do is to clarify that I am not an animator, and I wish that I were. Uh, I couldn't draw a, a good, decent drawing if my life depended upon it. And uh, but I, you know, I got involved in animation doing uh, everything but drawing, and uh, and I've been uh, blessed for uh, being involved in that. Um, I started off, and my background is is as a writer, and I had quite a bit of uh, experience in the uh, music retail industry, and uh, I, w- I had moved here with my wife in 1980, and uh, about three years later. We were living in a place uh, in here in Los Angeles in the Miracle Mile district. Um, that is on a street called Orange Street, which is near the uh, the vicinity of Miracle Mile, where the uh, Museum of Modern, uh, the uh, Art Museum is, and the La Brea Tar Pits. Uh-huh. And so, um, I uh, I had uh, just by accident there was like uh, we lived in a one bedroom apartment, and there was. Uh, a couple living a couple of doors down, they had a bigger place. They had a three-bedroom flat, a uh, lower story, and uh, which is, you know, pretty nice. But um, we uh, met, I met Gabor Chupo uh, strictly by accident. And um, he, uh, he claims, and I'm sure he's right, I just don't remember, to be honest, but he says that one night there was a knock on the door and that I was at the door that apparently somebody's cat had been run over, and I was concerned that it was his cat. And he said, "Hell no, we don't have a cat." <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. And uh, but what I, you know, I remember that we became friends because of our mutual love of the same kind of music. Um, it was pretty amazing. He, uh, I was a musician, and uh, and worked in the music business, and. Uh, you know, we just, that was our common ground. And so I got to know he and his wife, Arlene, and it turns out that they're running a studio out of their apartment. Oh, and wow. uh, they use the third bedroom as basically the uh, the workroom and the second bedroom as a, um, as like sort of an office. And, uh, you know, the, the kitchen table as the conference room and that sort of thing. Huh. And uh, so they, um, I just started getting involved with them. Oh, oh. And uh, they said, you know, uh, I said, well, you know, so what do you do? And he says, well, I'm an animator. And uh, it turns out that she was a art director and, uh, and an artist and uh, worked in uh, basically uh, the graphics animation field. And Gabor's background is very strong in Europe uh, in the character animation field. And so they had uh, combined their talents and, and uh, gotten married to boot. 
and started their own little animation company. So I, you know, I just said, well, uh, I'll, they invited me to go to work with them, and I just started off, you know, taking film to the lab. This is back in the day of films and labs. Oh sure, oh sure. And uh, doing that and doing stuff, uh, and helping out as pr pretty much as like a production assistant as a PA, and whatever else needed to be done. Wow. And and so I ended up, um, uh, I. Um, um, I got into the uh, advertising industry to uh, because I was invited to be a copywriter for uh, for a year or so. But it was also in another place. It was uh, on the same street. We were all. It was a it was a wonderful neighborhood. There was all these people with their own companies, little you know, little companies, entrepreneurial. And so I worked there, but I kept up a friendship with Gabor. And then one day, um, he said, "Hey, it's starting to pick up again." And Arlene and I would love to have you come back to work with us. And I said, well, great. Well, what's going on? And he said, well, there's this new network called uh, Fox. And uh, and I said, you mean a fourth network? That's never going to fly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and he said, yeah, and there's this show on there that they, they, they there was wonderful comedian named Tracy Ullman, and they're doing cartoons on there. And we're producing the cartoons. And I said, yeah, you're kidding me. And uh, he said, and I said, well, what are they? And he said, uh, uh, well, there's two of them, but one of them is by uh, Matt Groening. And I went, oh, my God, you're kidding. I said, Everyone knew Matt Groening. He did Life in Hell in, uh, uh, in uh, the L.A. Weekly. And he goes, well, no, it's not Life in Hell. It's something else. It's called The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember and, that. And I said, uh, well, cool. And, and this is the uh, honest-to-God truth. He said, you know... Uh, we think it's going to be a hit, that the Simpsons are going to take off, and we want somebody to help us with the momentum to get other work. And uh, I said, okay. I said, fine. So I ended up, again, doing as I did before, kind of just helping out around the studio, doing whatever needed to be done, and uh, but also making phone calls and, uh, you know, yeah. uh, s sending out... Uh, three-quarter-inch videotape reels of samples of these new little cartoons called The Simpsons and just try to get work anywhere. And uh, so that ended up into me um, at getting contacted by uh, a, a woman named Linda Semensky at this new, another new network uh, called uh, Nickelodeon. Oh yes, Nickelodeon. And uh, she said, well, "You know, we're really interested in your work." And I and I, I think actually I had sent uh, just a you know a couple of the Simpsons cartoons to her. And so they one thing led to another. I won't make it too long, but they um, were very interested in the studio for original content. But in the meantime, um, the uh, Simpsons. The cartoons were done uh, with a uh, very, very small group. I mean, it was uh, from the uh, Gracie film side. It was Jim Brooks and Sam Simon working with Matt Groening and also uh, Paul Germain, who was the head of development. And uh, it was essentially Paul and Matt writing the scripts, and then they record them over. They would record them over at the show in between doing all the live action skits, uh -huh. and th and then all that was sent over to uh, the studio. Which uh, then we had um, some directors and a producer. We had three directors, which was David Silverman, uh, uh, Bill Kopp was first, and then David Silverman and Wes Archer, and uh, Margot Pipkin uh, was a producer. And we had a camera guy and uh, some people doing cleanup animation and uh, storyboards and so forth. And but that was pretty much it. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I mean, that's that's pretty cool, though. I mean, just the fact that you got a chance to do all that. Because uh, uh, you know, even the Simpsons. I mean, it's a, uh, it's hard to believe that they're they're still around to, to this day after being kind of discovered back, you know, during the Fox days or even the early what HBO days uh, when they had. I think Tracy Allman had her show on HBO for a little while too before him. Uh, you know, to be honest, I don't remember. I became aware of her when I first heard of, uh, you know, being on Fox. Okay. Okay. And so, I, if she had a specials on HBO before that, I don't know, but I do know. That uh, as uh, as our company took off, that um, that's when I started getting other work for the company. So I was so I was at that time more like a marketing guy, but I slowly started getting into being a producer on special projects. We called it the special projects, 
And uh, that's where doing, I brought in things like, um, uh, speaking of HBO, we did a half hour special for HBO that I set up uh, on a book called Alexander and the Horrible No Good Very Bad Day. And oh. uh, it, that was a half hour musical, animated musical piece. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, also was, I was also able to get into Capitol Records, and we ended up doing a, a music video for the Beastie Boys called Shadrach. And uh, also uh, music videos for Luther Vandross, uh, Richard Thompson, and uh, and so it was expanding in that area. The so-called oh, wow. special projects. Oh, that's cool. No, that's really cool. I mean, I, you know, that's just the thing. You know, with me, I, I, I always find it very I always find it very interesting this effect of uh, knowing what people in the entertainment business do and, and how they get their start, how they got so to be so big. And that's kind of why I wanted to interview you today because you know, it just uh, everybody has a story to tell, and, and I and I feel that it's important for you to to, to tell your story. You know? Well, I appreciate that, and uh, basically, it was, it, it's just, it um, these were a group of people who loved what they're doing. And uh, just you know, it was um, it was uh, very exciting. And uh, there was at one point I actually brought uh, Klasky Chupa had done work for other companies that would get commercials, and they would sub out some of the commercial work uh, to uh, Klasky Chupo. And but one day I was actually able to bring the first commercial directly into uh, the studio, and it was like a thirty-second fully animated uh, commercial. That uh, for like thirty five thousand oh, dollars, and wow. uh, which is unfathomable with how much The Simpsons makes today. But I'll tell you, we were jumping up and down with joy. And uh, then the uh, what changed a lot of things was the Simpsons Butterfingers commercial oh, had come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And yep. uh, boy, it was th- that was uh, suddenly there were millions of people who were aware of The Simpsons, and there was a whole bunch of other variables as well in, involved as well. Um, so as it became program. I was involved in helping to set up, <coughs> excuse me, uh, getting in. Um, as I said, I had contacted uh, Linda Siminski, who is now with uh, uh, Public Broadcasting Service with PBS, um, to do. Uh, they invited Klasky Chupo to come up with some ideas for a show. Oh, and cool. so uh, Arlena Gabor and, and Paul Germain uh, came up with an idea of uh, uh, life seen through the eyes of one year old babies, and that was Rugrats. Oh, yes. And so they commissioned the Nickelodeon. I beg your pardon? I said yes, because of uh, Rugrats. I, I, I grew up on Rugrats. That was one of my favorite cartoons growing up. Oh, okay. There you go. And uh, that became, we did a pilot for them. It tested very well, and that became a series, and which led to a very, very uh, strong connection to Nickelodeon, uh, which culminated with, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know, five or six series, uh, three movies, just a lot of work, and um, some very, very successful shows. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and that's how, you know, it was wonderful. And then, uh, Go let's, ahead. let's see, uh, what other, uh, let's see, because what other animations did the uh, uh, Chasky Super, uh, I believe, did you uh, do, like, a uh, Duck Man as well? Was that part yes. of yours? Yes. Yes. There, there were the, the, the uh, shows, oh, uh, my goodness, i got to think about it real quick. There was uh, a show called Ah! Real Monsters. Ah, uh, yes, there, yes. And there was also Duck Man. There was another show called Santa Baguito for CBS. There was uh, shows for uh, for Nickelodeon as Ginger uh, as Ginger Caesar and also um, uh, Rocket Power okay. and uh, so Duckman was also that was a lot of uh, I was involved in that as a producer as an associate producer and uh, that was through Paramount Television for USA. So do you ever like just think about all the things that you that you uh, have accomplished in your career and just kind of just be like, wow, I can't believe I I was a part of that. Well, yeah, I mean, I am blessed. There's no question about that. I have been around this incredibly talented, hardworking people who are extremely good at what they do. I mean, it's that simple. I had gone from uh, from Klasky Chupo. I had gone on to uh, work at Nickelodeon as a producer. I was working in the development uh, department there and uh, produced some the pilots. And uh, the pilots that I produced there uh, were for, uh, at the time, it was called Sponge Boy. Apparently somebody had a uh, a uh, the rights to the name Sponge Boy, so it was changed to SpongeBob SquarePants, uh-huh. and uh, also uh, Cat Dog was a pilot I produced, okay. and uh, and uh, you know and uh, three other pilots, and uh, at least as I can remember, and uh, and again working with extremely talented people who worked very hard, and um, I can honestly say that. There was not at any time did anyone say, let's create something so we can get incredibly rich. Yeah. It was all, uh, uh, you know, it was things that, 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 that we all loved being involved with and tried to have fun doing it. 
and uh, and try to enjoy it as much as possible. I mean, uh, things change, yeah. and suddenly it becomes becomes a household name. So, what, um, so, so what, that's yeah. just the nature of change and growth. So what uh what are you? Lately, I have been uh, a couple of uh, projects. One, a story editor, and the uh, one of the writers uh, uh, called Boing the Play Ranger, okay. which is a show for it's uh, written and recorded here in the United States, but it's for the Asian market. It just premiered over there, huh. and in the ratings for uh, Korea. And uh, so now they, of course, had to take care of doing the Korean versions first. Yep. And uh, to, to a certain point, I still am. There's uh, good friends of mine started it. And I'm still involved with my friend Jeffrey Cater over there, S4, where we did a lot of stuff for, we did a half-hour special with the Cartoon Network. We did a bunch of cool uh, trailer work for the trailer companies for, you know, trailers being uh, uh, coming attractions, as they used to be called in the theaters. Yep. And I've also been involved uh, with another show called uh, Wildlife uh, wild Animal Babies through the oh. National Wildlife Federation wow. as a story editor <laughs> and uh, doing a lot of writing and now working now on some projects that I, I can't frankly talk about yeah, but uh, and working with with the studio and uh, they made me sign a piece of paper so I can't say anything. Yeah, that, that's understandable. <laughs> but uh, no, I appreciate yeah. I appreciate having you on and uh, you know thanks for uh, at least taking a few minutes of your time to, to, to let me talk to you because this is you know this is kind of a treat you know being able to talk to somebody who, who helped uh, you know helped start some of these uh, well known. Uh, Programs, you know that well, that most of my I, generation. I appreciate with. that. I, I again, I was just a a, uh, a cog amongst a bunch of uh, very very talented cogs. <laughs> I guess it's a weird way of looking at it, but I mean it's, a, it's definitely a team effort. On some of these things, there was a unique vision of people like Arlene Klask and Gabor Chupo or uh, uh, Everett Peck for Duckman, for, uh, Stephen Hillenberg for yep. uh, uh, for SpongeBob SquarePants, Peter Hannon for Cat Dog. They're all unique visions. It's the way that the uh, that you get a group of people to articulate that vision. That's the trick, and it's a lot of hard work. But it is, uh, you know, something that's I'm very, very grateful to have been involved with all of these people. All right. Well, I tell you what, Larry. Thanks for uh, taking the time to be on the show, and I wish you best of luck in the future. Thank you, Frankie. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Hey, you too, man. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. And and that was Larry LaFrances. Uh, as you heard, who worked for Classy uh, Trotsky Kupio, or Supio. <laughs> I'll get it right eventually, besides butchering the names. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to be able to uh, to chat with them, and I hope this edited, edit, or hope this turned out good, because uh, I was trying to, uh, I thought it, I don't know, we'll see how it sounds, I guess, but uh, this is my way of kicking off Labor Day weekend. Uh, I'm going to go back to how, it used, how I did it uh, before the summertime came. And uh, just go to one guest uh, for a while now instead of doing three guests every weekend because I just realized that it just, you know, maybe sometimes I'll be lucky to get a lot of guests, but most of the time it's like, well, uh, who knows? I mean, it's just a matter of uh, who I can get. But I do got some potential big guests uh, uh, that will be coming up pretty soon. I'm not going to say who yet, but uh, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll know. But anyway, thanks, Larry, for uh, uh, coming on the show. And, uh... We'll see you again for another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show and the Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture series that will continue throughout the next season, this uh, sixth season of my YouTube show. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.